Hi, I'm David Smith, and this is In a Word. You know, perhaps no writer, especially of the New Testament, does more to describe our spiritual warfare than Paul does. Of all the writers, he emphasizes it the most, and out of all of his writings, his prison letters really especially emphasize that, and among those, the book of Ephesians. In fact, when you look at the book of Ephesians, he devotes an entire section in chapter 6 to our warfare against Satan. And let me read a couple of verses. In Ephesians 6, verse 10, beginning, Paul writes and says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And listen, that section of verses, all verses 10 through 12, they are full of words that we could look at. But in the reading of this passage, did you notice in verse 12 that Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we, and the implication is that we wrestle against those spiritual powers. Wrestle, that's an interesting word, isn't it? And that's the word I want to look at for just a few moments with you today, the word wrestle. It's an interesting word, in fact, that I'm aware this is the only time in the New Testament where this Greek term that's translated wrestle appears. I know of no other instance where it appears. I, there are terms that are like it, like where uh, Paul would encourage Timothy to fight the good fight of the faith, or that as a soldier we ought to war good warfare. They're, they're similar, but they're not exactly uh, as, as, as deep as the word picture is here. So this is the only time I know that it appears in the New Testament. It's interesting because this word described the battle between two men in which the victor, and both were trying to throw each other to ground, the victor would be determined by one man holding the other to the ground uh, with his neck, his hand on that man's neck, pinning him to the ground. Paul is describing in this passage not some sort of a passive, jovial controversy between two people. He is talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat. He is talking about mortal combat, a savage bloody battle in which two men are engaged and the victor is the one who survives and the one who loses is the one that dies. It is a bloody battle that Paul is describing by the use of this word. And I don't even know that in human words that I can adequately describe the word picture that's built into that. He is, he is describing a, a graphic scene as we fight against Satan and his forces. It's interesting because if you go back and study historical records, you'll find that uh, the Romans, the Greeks, uh, had, this, had many games that they played. I don't even know that it's fair to call them games, but they were sports, they were contests. And one of them is it's like what we would call a, a boxing match. Maybe it's more like the cage fighting you see today, but they would wear gloves, and these gloves would have uh, iron uh, shards and iron bars so that as they sought to uh, lay punches on the other individual, not only would it cause uh, deep bruising and internal bleeding, they would just lacerate the face. And, the, and really the head was the only target in these battles and they would literally bludgeon and cut each other to death. Paul is drawing off of that word picture and he's saying, look, you are engaged in that kind of battle with Satan. In, in one historical record, it was interesting because uh, one man was a, a noted victor of the games and he, he often sharpened his uh, fingernails, his fingertips, to the point that he would, he would try to cut into the bellies of his victims and disembowel them. And Paul is saying, look, uh, you may think that this battle against Satan is some sort of a, a lackadaisical, you know, happenstancical type of a battle. It's not that way. Paul says you are locked in mortal combat with Satan. He wants to savagely destroy you. He's drawing that word picture out so that we understand the severity of it. Now, with that in mind, there are a few things that I want to point out from Ephesians 6 and other verses that flow into this idea of a wrestle with Satan. Uh, number one, this battle, this wrestling, is spiritual in nature. It's not a physical battle. It's spiritual in, in nature. Uh, obviously, uh, our battle is with words, according to 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6, but our enemy is Satan. We are fighting against the devil and his forces. Uh, I want you to notice that Paul says you're involved in this battle. You can't escape it. You, you are locked in this mortal combat, and either you are winning the battle or you're losing it. That's, those are the only two options. You, you can't exempt yourself from this warfare. You're engaged in it. Uh, obviously, 
uh, God has given us the armor necessary to win this wrestle against Satan. All that armor, that panoply that he talks about there in Ephesians chapter 6. And remember, I, above all, I want you to remember from our word wrestle today that this is a savage, bloody warfare. Meaning, of course, that in the end the devil wants to destroy your soul. It's not that he wants to be your friend. He wants you to be lost in a devil's hell forever. Don't ever forget that. And that's why of all those words used in Ephesians 6, I think it's such an interesting use of the term wrestle because Paul wants us to understand the severity of this conflict. Wrestle. I know it's been a hard word, a very deep and a very sobering word, but it's been our word for the day. I'm David Smith, and this is In a Word.